Hey what's up guys, this is Mikhail Supreme from Night and Day Anime Studios and I'm here once again to give you another drawing demonstration. I want to give a big big shout out to the M Mount Memorial Public Library for allowing me to do this once again with you guys. It's National Poetry Month in April. It's a special occasion to celebrate the importance of poets and poetry in our culture. So this video will be dedicated to Maya Angelou. There will also be a second video in the future of this month, so I suggest you look out for that. So, Maya Angelou was an American poet, a civil rights activist, born on April 4th, 1928, and unfortunately passed away on May 28th, 2014, at the age of 86. She published even seven autobiographies, three books of essays, several books of poetry, and is credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows spanning over 50 years. She received dozens of awards and more than 50 honorees degrees. Angelo is best known for her series of seven autobiographies which focus on her childhood and early adult experiences. The first of 1969, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, I recommend you go to your local library and pick up a copy. <laughs> she was also an actress, a writer, a director, a producer of plays, movies, and public television programs. So there you have it folks. Let's begin drawing this amazing public icon and we sure shall begin. So, I hope you guys have um, paper, pencils, erasers, a sharpener, but we're about to begin. So, as you can see here, I have everything set up for myself. I have a page of printed references of the great poet so I can have something to I could look at and reference. Now, when I get started, I like to do a quick warm-up session just to get the blood circulating in my hands, get the blood flowing, and kick out the joints in, in, my, in my hand there. So, you know, I recommend this as an easy exercise, a little warm-up session for yourself. You know, start drawing some little doodles, some shapes, uh, some cross hash lines, you know, uh, 3D, anything that would, you know, get your blood flowing in your hand there, you know, just, you know, before a good big project. It will loosen up the joints in your hand so you get ready for that awesome drawing you're going to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is just a warm-up exercise that I always recommend doing before you start drawing. You can even draw a couple of poses, so stick figure men, anything that you know you desire. There, I seem to be ready. So now I have like a couple of number two pencils. I have a 2B pencil for boldness. And I have a plastic eraser at on hand. 
I usually use the plastic eraser than the normal pencil eraser uh, for anything. And I also have a sharpener so I can make sure my equipment is ready. Here we go, we're about to begin. As you can see here, I have several examples of references. You know, different you know, poses and faces so I can get the right features if I need to for different directions. But as you can see onto your right hand side, you should see the reference I will be using in this drawing demonstration. So when I always start a drawing, I always like to start with the head. To do so, I recommend doing it very lightly on the page. Now, I'm talking about no added pressure. Just let your pencil glide across the page. Don't put any pressure at all, and I can't stress this, no pun intended, any more bluntly. <laughs> and uh, like I always do, I like to do the crisscross on the circle. So I center the face. I have one line going across that'll be representing the eye line, which I'll demonstrate in a momentarily. But now I'm just going to do is mainly it's just step one. It's just laying down the foundation. So what I'm doing is just utilizing just a couple of shapes. The circle representing the head, the square under the circle representing the turtleneck she is wearing in the reference, and this line going down uh, will be representing the long neck that she's wearing, and more like a square like shape for the shoulders. So, as you can see there, on that line I mentioned is the circle, um, the, the eye line, pardon, is I'm going to be placing small little circles there, representing the eyes. And then I'm going to be placing another line going across, the second line, that'll be representing the nose line. And the third line here, it'll be representing where the mouth will be placed. Obviously, the, the line going center uh, vertically will be representing the center of the face, so I can know everything will be align perfectly so for the nose right off the center line there I'm using like more of a rounded triangle shape there and then of course I'm be placing the lines for the lips I got like a nice little smile there not grand but a small smile and that circle under that smile is basically is the chin I'm going to be using a little piece of folded paper that will be helping, you know, in the long run because there will be a lot of sketching. This little technique with this piece of paper under my hand is going to help me where I don't have to worry about smudging my drawing or having any pencil smudges on my hand. It will keep my drawing nice and clean so I don't have to worry about any issues with that. So all I'm doing now is just shaping out the head. The face is already done, so now I'm adding an extra layer on top of the, the face there. I'll be representing the skull. If I started the hairline right where the face line ended on top, she would have like a flat head. So you want to make sure you want to add a, uh, some kind of cranium there. <laughs> so next what I'm doing now is adding uh, uh, two lines representing the eyebrows. And then I'm just adding a little bit more line detail for the bridge of the nose toward that triangle I put center representing the nose. Now I'm just using two little circles on the side to representing each nostril on either side of the nose. Adding a little line detail, a little bit of anatomy, a little dip under the nose that goes right on top of your lips. And now I'm just adding the upper lip going from one side up down to, to the middle of the line, going down and back up again to add to the other line. And then of course, adding another line going the other direction, just rounded for the bottom lip. Now I'm going to be tackling the eye, not all, normally, uh, I always like to darken the top of the circle that will be representing the eyelashes. It 
she doesn't have really thick eyelashes, so I'm not going to go too crazy detail. But I'm going to be tackling the pupils next. Uh, she has um, on her right eye, the eye pupil seems to be more toward the side and the eye pupil on the right, on the left, pardon, it seems to be uh, centered. So I'm going to make that detail noticeable into this demonstration because it shows that in the reference. Now I'm just going to close in the eye, um, overlaying the circle to put in that, that um, eyelid on the bottom. Very carefully now. Don't darken, don't put any pressure onto your pencils unless you're really confident of how the drawing is going to look like. You don't want to have any eraser burn or pencil smudges if you have to erase because there's going to be a lot of sketching being done in this demonstration. That's why I recommend doing this very lightly. Now I'm just thickening those eye, uh, the eyebrows there, adding a couple of strands, couple doing a little line work going down in, in the same direction toward the side of the face, thick in the thick by the bridge of the nose, thinner toward the edges. Now what we're going to do is just try to shape up the face a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more pressure. As you can see, my pencil uh, sketch is getting a little bit darker already. Adding a couple of anatomy lines across, just for a little cross detail. So I'm looking at the reference. I see the creases and the expression marks that she's, she's given onto her face. So I'm just adding a couple of lines like the cheekbones, the smile gesture, the, uh, the skin stretch for the smile her cheeks poking out so and then the, the wrinkles under her eyes so i'm just adding all those little line details in the meantime now i think next i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be tackling the ears now when it comes to the ears you can look at yourself in the mirror and see for yourself there um, the ears are usually around the same uh, position area by where the eyes and the nose line is as you can see here in here right across the eyes right under the nose that's where the ears are and I usually just put a simple shape like a potato chip on each either side of the, of the head now remember looking at the reference you kind of see the ear on to the left hand side a little bit more than the one on the right the right is kind of hidden behind her head so you want to make sure you make those details show she has hoop earrings into the, in the drawing in the picture. So I'm just making little circular gestures so I know where exactly the earrings are going to be at. So now that I feel a little more confident where the face is placed, I'm going to be erasing some of this extra line work, these guidelines that I created for myself so I can center the face properly. So I don't need them anymore and it'll just get confused in my outcome finish in my drawing if I leave them there. So let's just get rid of that. Now it's time just to add a couple of line details. Depending on your skill level, you don't have to do so much detail, but it's good to practice so you can show some somewhat of a, a line anatomy of course the face to show that this is a fully functional face, not more of a cartoon.
Yes, so now that I feel a little bit more uh, confident um, with the direction of the drawing is going, now I'm adding more pressure to my pencil. Uh, before it was 25% pressure, now I'm gonna be adding a good 30%. I will say more 55. <laughs> As you can see in the beginning, I um, when I added the guidelines onto the onto the head there on a the circle, I didn't went on a straight line down. I forgot to mention I didn't go straight down the middle, and um, and you know, of course, her face is tilted more toward the left, but it's actually her right, but it looks like to our left. So I had to make the line going center of the face uh, more slanted than usual, and of course, the eyes that's going across and the nose and the mouth lines. I have to uh, accommodate that slant as well. So it look it doesn't look like she's standing straight up, but if you look in the reference picture onto the right hand side, you can see she has more of a slight tilt in her head there. So you wanna make that noticeable. You don't wanna be her face, her head looking straight, unless you want to just do that. But of course, I recommend using a reference that actually has that kind of pose. But I'm trying to make this replicate as much as possible in my art skill level to do so. So right now I'm just using the eraser just to get rid of some of the kind, you know, unnecessary detail lines. You know, because sometimes you don't want the lines to be too dark. You might want to just maybe make it fade into there because you know, you want to make it look realistic. You don't want to make it look too plastic. But don't worry, we'll be getting into shading once we um, get deeper into the session. So for the shading, um, what I'm doing is more is called cross um, hatch lines, which you know I have done in my other demonstrations. If you have seen my other videos, it's mainly just lines going across areas to shade. The closer the lines, the darker they are. The more expanded, widespread they are, the lighter the shade. You can do it gradually with the gradient. To make it from dark to light depending on the position of the where the light source is at so I recommend practicing doing that with different shades and different uh, tools of pencils there's different gradients you can use but I'm gonna be using the 2b in a moment but for now I'm just doing it just adding a couple of line details around the eyes you know actually extra line work for the eyelids and darkening the upper eyelid to show there is some kind of eyelashes there and then I'm going to be darkening the pupils. See how I'm just darkening it? And then I'm going to add like a little white glare, a little nice little shine in the eyes.
As you look at the reference onto the left hand side, which is her right side of her face, you can see there is like more of a shade going down the side of her face, past her forehead down to her eyes, around her cheekbone, and then down her jawline, at least with her chin. So as you can see there, I added a line going across that area there, and then I'm just, all I did was put some cross hatch lines on that, around that shaded area there, to, co to show that features, to give it that a nice 3D look, so it doesn't look so flat. So right here at this moment, I think I'm gonna do is start adding the hairline. So um, what I do in there is just very lightly sketched, just a more of like a, a circular shape fro around the, around the scalp. That meets down on top of the forehead, down to where the ears meet, and then right out from the ear, right out back again on top of the head. You see how I basically have the hair, not on top of the, the cranium, because you don't want to give it that flat look. Don't forget, the hair is on top of the skull. It's not on the skull, it's on top of it. So you want to off, show that off there. So I have like a very light shape a concept of guidelines to show how the hair is going to look. Obviously, you can always manipulate more as you get further in, which you'll see in the in the later in this demonstration here. So already I know that the hair is definitely going to fit on the page. Again, all this is all part of step one, laying down the foundation. All right, so around the neck area, I made it very dark, you know, when it comes to the shading. And now I'm going to start detailing the, the turtleneck that she's wearing, as you can see here. Yep. Just going to be meeting there, um, right where the ear earring hit, uh, loop is. And then I'm going to be start placing the shoulders. I looked at the reference and trying to measure out where the shoulders are actually are at. It looked like I had to add a, a little bit more layer on top. Uh, for the shoulders so I did that All right, so at this point, all I'm mainly doing around the face is start adding the little shade guidelines and doing a little cross hatch lines around, darkening the areas that need to be dark, lighting the areas that need to be light. Around this area, around this stage, it's good to um, 
overlook your reference and make sure everything is accurate. If you need to erase around this time, it will be the best time to erase. You don't want to have too much sketch marks into your drawing and you have to erase because it mainly will probably offer you uh, an eraser burn or uh, very bad smudges where it will take a couple of points off your drawing. It was a 10, now it's a 7, all because you added, you know, you had to erase something and it has a very bad smudge over it or eraser burn. So you want to be careful on that. But why it's still light, you want to make sure that, you know, things are looking good. You can erase certain parts of the drawing and proceed as with caution. All right, so here I'm starting to add the line work for the, the hoop earrings. Just letting my pencil glide across the, um, the paper, obviously, but a little bit more pressure, you know, since I feel a little more confident of the direction of I'm um, going with the drawing. If I don't, but I could right now what I'm doing is just erasing the guidelines that I had utilized before with the line work for the circles. So now I feel satisfied how it's gonna look. Now I'm just pretty much darkening the line work and adding a little bit of pressure to the earrings. Yeah, so I'm just erasing some of the shading a little bit because I want to make it a little bit lighter. And under the lips there, a little bit dark. And then I'm just using a couple of shading techniques on the lips. More toward the edges. Now I'm just forming the chin. Simple lines, darkening around the neck area there. Right around the jawline that meets with the ear. Now it's time to work on that ear. Looking at the reference, I'm trying to decide on how it's shaped. I see it's, it's curved upward. I'm adding that first flap on top of the ear and then the, the inner canal and the, the flap that's right there on front of the ear. See? See how it's shaped? It goes curved upward, downward, and then has a, like a dangle loop 
onto the ear there. So I want to make sure I have all that showing in through my drawing. Now I'm just adding the earring. Yep, crush hash lining all around the face there to give it that awesome gradient shading around the head area, around the nose area, darker toward the edges, lighter as it meets the middle of the face. If you can see the light source mainly is, um, you can see the light source is like toward the middle of the face there, coming from the forehead down onto the left hand side of her face. And then you can see like the dark shade going down uh, by the left side of her face there as well by the ear. But the center light source is in this partial in the middle of the center of her face. So that's why you see that I'm doing a lot of shading around the edges coming moving forward into the lighter regions of her face there. I'm not going to shade the entire face obviously. I still want to um, show there is some kind of light source. So now I'm gonna be working with the hair. It has different wavy hair going different directions, more toward the left side in a curved motion. So as you can see here, what I'm doing with my pencil, um, again, I'm not using any force. I'm just letting my pencil glide across the page freely to offer that awesome line work of fluid fluidity you know um, i think i'm making up words now <laughs> you're making it the hair look like it's flow it's flowing in one direction hair is usually messy but at this case in uh, doing the layout and trying to offer a direction guide to myself i'm just trying to make it look like going to direction as it shows in the reference so again I'm not focusing or, or concentrating on the line work. I was, again, letting the pencil glide. Just glide. Just don't be afraid. It's hair. You don't have to put every strand, but, you know, it's, but let the hair just, you know, be free. <laughs> All 
All right, so at this point, I'm using my graphite pencil. It's a 2B, B into B for bold. They have different gradients of uh, different uh, graphite pencils. I always tell a lot of my students if they love pencil sketching, I do recommend to experiment with different uh, types. They have different gradients of different tips for great uh, graphite pencils actually. Uh, this one is one of my favorite ones because it gives you offer that nice rich blackness and dark uh, gradient that I would need that would could um, that would respond very well with my number two pencil. Um, they have different numbers which goes from like anywhere from I believe two to nine in B gradient and there's also uh, H gradient which also stands for hard. Now hard is a different type of um, tip of gradient where it would be more fine line I should say and more of a sharper tone uh, when it comes to the gradient and of course B is for boldness where it gets you more of a thicker layer of darkness when it comes to using it. Um, right now I'm doing the same thing I'm just pretty much tracing over my number two pencil sketch and going the same direction that I have done but of course same deal I'm letting the pencil glide across the pencil but I notice she has like some dark features in the hair that's more onto the right side so I'm trying to do that as well is trying to cut her in the hair black and then I'm probably going to leave a lot of um, empty space so the representing the gray so I'm going to use the background of the paper to show off the where the gray hairs are going to be at in her um, in her locks so again, I do recommend, you know, go to your nearest art store, buy a pack of pencils. Now, I guarantee you, you're not going to be using each and every one um, daily or in any sketch. You probably won't even touch a few um, after trying them out. But it's good to see which works best for your art style and your art skills. And you have a better uh, idea of what direction you want to go with. So you know, I always recommend getting a, a pack of pencils and just try them out. Just just experiment. It's always good to um, look back at your reference, step back, look at your drawing, make sure that you go, if you're, is this the right direction you're going with? So you can make the modifications if you need to. You don't want to go too far and then you went the too far and you know, where, what they, what they say is, you know, um, you go too far for return. Yeah, correct me. Write in the comments section what that term, um, that term is, but it's, you know, you went too far for no return something like that but uh you know what i'm saying so now i'm going to be using the graphite pencil a little bit more now to darken a lot of the features over trace my steps a little bit So now it's time to color in the um, her, her uh, turtleneck sweater she's wearing. It's, since it's black, I think I picked the best reference. <laughs> I don't have to go into detail with costuming and, and, uh, and line work. All I gotta do is just color in the turtleneck and the, and the upper torso of her body. But it's gonna take a little bit of work, a little bit of elbow grease anyway, cause I would have to add in those lines and um, hash lines, cross hash lines and uh, overlay and overlay and overlay rinse and repeat basically and just to make the outfit dark enough that it will look well into the drawing
Oh, by the way, I also forgot to mention uh, we're already in step two. Uh, step two is mainly is uh, refining the lines. So step one is mainly is, you know, laying down the foundation with shape work, sketch and line work to make sure everything fits onto the page and you're adding the guidelines to give you a uh, powerful outcome finish. And step two is refine the lines where you mainly is just you are retouching the line work that you already done, get rid of the sketch work and just adding a thicker, darker, boldness line to your sketch. Since you feel more confident at this at this stage, you should be really be doing it's just mainly just tracing over your steps and uh, basically doing touch up work and darkening the line work to make it pop off the page. And then soon we'll be in step three, which is mainly is just the finish. Um, just adding a little bit of textures and, and um, line work detailing. Um, but mainly the step three is usually color too as well. But we're not gonna be coloring this drawing. Um, if you have colored pencils or markers and you wanna color your drawing, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing that in this demonstration. I just wanted to show you a couple of um, sketch work that I have done, I, I'm doing now. Um, my other workshops have been on a digital tablet. So I wanted to show off that I can at least try to show you guys uh, more of a free handed technique uh, when it comes to doing the drawing and you can mainly see uh, my hand. So what direction and how I'm proceeding with the drawing. And uh, obviously you could look at the reference onto the right hand side so you can actually draw from there or you can follow me and at least maybe utilize some of the tips I'm offering in this demonstration into your artwork. All right, so now I'm going to be start detailing the necklace that's going down uh, her um, upper torso there, going down from her shoulders. I'm not good, you know. I I decided to make it a little bit longer because it's long on her in the reference drawing. Um, reference, excuse me, um, down there. So I'm, I made it longer 
to accommodate that to make it look like the drawing. It probably I could probably go a little bit longer, but to uh, for time's sake and also to make sure it fits on the page there and it goes well with my drawing. I'm just going to just have it just a circular motion going down, rinse and repeat on top with the lines following it on top there to close it up to the shoulders. And now I'm just adding just lines going down in a slant to show a little bit of detail of the jewelry, but I'm not gonna go full force with the details, but just going to go slants. And then just now I'm going to start start adding the shoulders. Then I'm going to start darkening the, the sweater that she's wearing. Notice that I'm still using the fold up paper under my hand. This is the reason why I said it's good to have one on hand. No um, pun intended. <laughs> but. Um, you know, so you don't have to worry about, again, smudging your drawing up or getting that smudge stains on your hand as yourself there. Because, um, trust me, um, your hand's going to be rested on your drawing. On top of that, it's going to be a lot of sketch. A lot of sketch work on, on that page there. And then if you haven't noticed already, if you don't use this technique using the photo paper, um, you're going to see a lot of pencil smudges all over your drawing. It's going to look smudged out. It's going to look very fuzzy and not clean at all so you, that's why i use i use a little photo paper um i don't use tissue paper seems to work well with me you can use something scrap or maybe something you did a, like a test drawing on or a, a funny doodle on and you can uh, just fold that up and just utilize that as um as your photo piece of paper to use so you don't worry about messing up your artwork under your hand it's, it's good to do You can probably see now that I'm, uh, of course, of course, I'm using the cross hash line technique. I'm just crisscrossing the line work to make it dark and just overlaying it, overlaying, overlaying it to make it darker, darker, because it's the, the sweater is basically just all black. So that's what I'm doing. So, you know, this might take a, a while, but, you know, it's, it's going to give me a, a rich finish finish. Uh, for a, a good powerful outcome for my drawing.
Yeah, so at this moment, I'm just, what I'm doing is just retouching areas, make it more pop, more sharp, more boldness on the outline of the drawing. So it'll, it'll pop off the page a little bit using the graphite pencil. And uh, probably going to add a couple more uh, strands into the hair and also a little bit more shading and detailing around the eyes. Just to, of course, you know, to give it that more realistic feel to it and whatnot. You know, sure it won't look too cartoony. Uh, into my drawing sketch here but um, you know for st stress for time I'm definitely going to show you guys the um, the outcome finish of the drawing here in uh, just a moment so here you go this is the drawing here that I, um, this is the finished drawing. Um, I, prob I did a, a couple of manipulation on the outcome of the finish of the drawing off screen. Um, after, look after looking at it, you know, um, you know, I fixed up her lips a little bit more, uh, work on a little bit more on the hair, obviously, and gave her a little bit more uh, forehead and mess with the lips a little bit and whatnot. Uh, and plus put my, my signature on it because an artist always signs his artwork. But here you go. This is the finish that I have done for um, for Maya Angelo, and this was fun. I mean, I really enjoyed doing this drawing, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, checking out this demonstration. Uh, this took me at least um, I'll say maybe an hour and twenty minutes, uh, start to finish. You know, even the video was like maybe an hour, but I did an extra twenty minutes off screen. Um, working on it a little bit afterwards and whatnot. You know, obviously when you look at your drawing, you know, you take time away from the drawing, you walk away, come back, look at it again, and then you probably will see some imperfections or some things that you might want to add or take away, and which I did, you know, hey, that's that's how I am as an artist. Um, always I my, my worst critique. <laughs> But that's a good thing. It always takes you. It always keeps you on your toes, and you um, always try to reach for new heights to be better, to do better, and always take it to the next level. So I hope I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. Again, once again, I want to thank the Elmont Memorial Library for allowing me to do this. And again, for the month of April, I am doing poets. And look out for the next um, demonstration video. Later on this month, I believe it will be posted on the website on the 13th. So look out for that one. Uh, you won't believe your eyes who is going to be on that one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, like I said. And if you have a drawing to share, please, you know, email it to the Young Adult Department of the Elmont Memorial Library. I would love to see it. And if you want to get in contact with me, of course, just look up Night and Day Anime Studios. I'm active on Facebook and I'm also on Instagram. Make sure to follow me there. And if you have questions about different things when it comes to art, I'll be more than happy to help you to the best of my abilities to get you to that next level. Guys, thank you. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. Thank you for hanging out with me. And this was fun. Be well.